start. Okay. Often a couple minutes. Right. Okay. We'll wait a few minutes. Let's say Did you guys have a meeting, or is this a seminar that you? It's a training I put on twice a year oh. uh, for landlords and property managers, and so in the spring I have it over the course of two Tuesday evenings, and then in the fall I have it just at eight a.m. to five p.m. Do you have pretty good turnout? Um, yeah, yep. So this uh, last class I think I had eighteen. I always have anywhere from about sixteen to twenty. We're just waiting for other people. Somebody other than me. Mine's on. Mine's on. Mine's on. Mine's on. No, no, the traffic is not, it's not pretty out there. And if people don't normally take, I mean, they might not have known that Main Avenue part of it's closed down. I'm guessing they're all stuck on the bridge. Do you live do you live in Moorhead where you don't have to go on well, Main well, Avenue? I came right from the police department, okay. Um, which is on the north side. There you go. Center. But I'm currently flooded out of my home. I live out in rural Glen and right on the Buffalo River. Oh yeah. And our house is an old farmhouse and mm -hmm. that sits up higher ground but our road yep. to get to it um, we lose access so I've been out of the house for two weeks oh jeez my husband stayed behind the house just to we had so much snow in the yard he right. to make sure the sump pump wasn't yep. going to fail and, um, because in 2009 my husband's a fire department in Moorhead and we were out of our house fighting the Moorhead flood for I think we were out of our house for close to for sure three weeks by the time my husband he had a boat in to check on the house oh, and finally sure. got wide enough that he could go check on the house and we had a couple feet of water in the basement oh no and so it was like oh no so now he's nervous about leaving the house oh away. sure i would be so too he, he's been waiting he hasn't had a boat but he's had to wade in and out of his <laughs> chest waders uh which isn't appealing to me no so i i go stay with some extended family in north fargo there you go but yeah, in the mornings just coming from North Fargo, like the traffic is different. Yeah. It's, it's heavy. Yeah. Yep. When and you it's have bridges closed. Yep. It's a big impact. Yep. Well, the Main Avenue bridge is open. You just can't. I don't know how far Main Avenue is closed, but I know from like right at the edge of the bridge on, I don't know. All right, here. We'll probably get. Are you okay. good to get going? Sure, we'll just get going. I I think we have some commissioners that are probably held up in traffic. Um, do we want to just do a roll call? Sure. Nate Algard, Connie Auden.
Deb White, Shinwar Mai, Mikel Pauline Normanden, Here. Willard Yellowbird, and Heather Keeler. I didn't know she was, <laughs> okay, gotcha. Um, all right, so obviously we can't do the agenda, so, and I don't see any citizens to be heard, so we'll just start with our guest speaker um, for today. Leanne Wallen, is yes. that correct? Okay. Yes, uh, so I'm the community policing coordinator with the Moorhead Police Department, and one part of my job is managing our crime-free multi-housing program. And so I deal with a lot of landlord-tenant issues, and so I thought I would share some information with you about that aspect of my job. So I've uh, shared some handouts here. Um, one is I'm a member of the Minnesota Crime Prevention Association, and as being part of that, we participate in the Minnesota Crime-Free Multi-Housing Program. This program, there are three elements to it. One being landlord and property manager training. Uh, the second being security assessment of rental properties. And the third being tenant training. So twice a year, I hold a training for our landlords and property managers. And I've given you a copy of the agenda of what that training looks like. And I hold it in the spring, I hold it over the course of two Tuesday evenings, and in the fall I hold it as a one day, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, the reason I, in the spring I offer it in, over the course of two Tuesday evenings is because we do have several landlords that they have full-time jobs and sure. they are landlords on the side, so this way they don't have to try to get out of work or take a day of vacation, so we accommodate that with having two evening evenings for the training. So you can see um, what that training looks like is uh, I go through kind of the history of uh, crime-free multi-housing. I talk about uh, doing applicant screening, background checks, things like that. Now in no way do I or the Moorhead Police Department or the City of Moorhead do we tell landlords who they can and cannot rent to. That is completely up to them. I just educate them on benefits of doing applicant screening and background checks just so that they can educate themselves and make informed decisions. But it's always up to them of who they want to rent to. We do not regulate that whatsoever. Uh, we also have a ordinance in the city of Moorhead. It's called Conduct on Registered Premises, and I'll talk a little bit more of that as well, but I take this opportunity to educate our landlords and property managers on that ordinance so they understand it. I have a police detective uh, that comes. He's one of our narcotics detectives, and he talks about recognizing illegal drug activity in their rental property. Hi. Here's some handouts if you can... Hand one down there as well, please. Thank you. Um, we also have a Clay County Sheriff's deputy come talk about the whole process of uh, unlawful detainers, evictions, and abandoned property. I have an attorney that comes and talks um, for an hour and a half on legal issues uh, for landlords. and. That's definitely an aspect of the training that the landlords love to get some free legal advice, for sure. Uh, because we do stress to our landlords that it is important that they make sure their leases are uh, simple, that they're easily to be understood by everybody. Um, I tell them, I encourage them to spend some money with an attorney on the front end, making sure they're leases are not violating any fair housing laws and things like that so I always um, give them that advice. We also have a, a person from the Fargo Housing Authority that comes and talks about Section 8 housing which I find very a very valuable part of this training is because a lot of landlords um, may not be willing to um, rent to somebody with Section 8 housing because they simply don't understand it. Right. So this I had is, never heard about, I just heard about that recently because we have a rental. I had no idea what that Yeah, <laughs> what and that I is. think 
I think there's a lot of myths out there and so I just love to bring her in and she explains it and I've gotten really good feedback from landlords that they appreciate having that speaker come in and educate them on Section 8 housing. Uh, then we have one of our rental uh, city rental codes compliance technicians come in and talk to our landlords about uh, the inspections that they do. Um, because we certainly don't want our landlords to fail their inspections. Right. We want them to be prepared when we come there because we want our landlords to be successful in um, getting their properties registered. And really it, it is all about, our whole rental registration is all about ensuring safe rental housing for our um, for the tenants and our residents. And then a uh, newer aspect of this training is terrorism awareness and prevention. And so this is, it's just, it's a full um, agenda of training, but what's nice is um, the rental registration ordinance in 2005, it was rewritten to make this actually mandatory for new landlords then that register their properties that they do have to take this training. Okay. And so um, that's nice and, and sometimes they come in not very happy to be there because they're being forced to come right. there. But by the end of the day, I always tell them, bear with me, by the end of the day, I guarantee you are going to have learned something today of value that's going to help you be a better landlord and uh, run, run your business um, to the best you can. And by the end of the day, that holds true. My evals are always actually very positive. So, so that is the first, um, first part of the Minnesota Crime Free Multi Housing Program. The second um, portion is called crime prevention through environmental design and so I will go out and do a free assessment to rental properties and I will give them recommendations to follow to make their properties safer. Um, so there's seven different elements there um, but some of the key things are I go and I assess the lighting on the property, um, make sure that in the gr out in the exterior and in the interior in the common areas so the laundry room things like that and exterior by the garbage dumpsters and the garages that there's sufficient lighting so that everybody feels safe on the property uh, also landscaping is a very big thing that um, you know you don't want overgrown uh, trees and shrubs um, so that, that element is completely voluntary. Landlords do not have to do that, but I provide the service of going out and um, doing the free assessment. Um, but it is up to them if they wanna follow suit um, and pursue that further. And then the third aspect is holding a tenant safety meeting. And that also is not required. That is an optional thing for um, landlords to do. Um, but we encourage them to hold an annual tenant safety meeting and that allows myself an opportunity um, to come and share crime prevention tips and things like that. So that in itself is the, the Crime Free Multi-Housing Program. Um, I also shared a handout just of what our Crime Free Multi-Housing page looks like on our website moreheadpolice.com. And then the other aspect I wanted to talk about um, is the ordinance then, the City of Moorhead Ordinance, which I've also provided you a copy with, and that is Section 9-7-12, Conduct on Registered Premises. And so this is an ordinance that the City of Moorhead has that just really tries to help ensure that our landlords are being active managers um, in their rental properties. Um, the Moorhead City Council looks at landlording as running a business and so uh, we just want to make sure that they are um, taking a serious involvement in their investment of that rental property. So it is my job to monitor all police activity that takes place in rental properties and then I'm looking for uh, violations then of this, this ordinance and if there's a violation um, like this a lot covers loud noises, noisy parties, illegal drug activity, and so when I find violations of this, then I send a letter to the landlord notifying them of what has occurred and a 
copy of that letter goes to the, the tenants so they are aware of it as well. And then we, there's just an expectation that the landlord then is going to um, try to work with their tenants and correct the behavior so we don't have repeated calls for service of these nuisance type calls. And then I also um, serve on a committee called Successful Outcomes for Tenants and Landlords. And so our committee is made up of myself as a representative of the, of the police department. And then we also have many um, housing advocates and representatives from the FM Homeless Coalition. And we are a very small committee and, and uh, we meet and just try to find ways that we can um, try to resolve issues or uh, a big goal of ours is we try to provide educational opportunities for landlords and property managers and so we try to hold quarterly brown bags and so I just pulled all the the ones that we had in 2018 we had one called introduction to mental health first aid and this was um, we had a speaker from the founder, it was actually the founder and executive director of Wellness in the Woods, um, just to kind of talk to landlords and property managers about um, how they can possibly help a tenant who is experiencing a crisis or a stressful situation um, and g give them some guidance on, on how to be helpful in those situations. Then in April, we had a fair housing for landlords, tenants, and property managers, and that in fact was recorded and uh, is on your web page actually for, for people to see. Uh, then in August, we had a brown bag on everything you wanted to know about the landlord risk mitigation fund but we're too afraid to ask so this is a really good program that we're really trying to promote um, and get our landlords involved in and so this was all about uh, informational se se session to just educate them and give them an opportunity to ask lots of questions and then the last one we had in November was um, everything you need to know about smoke-free housing. And that was held over the, at the Fargo Cass County Public Health. And they had a landlord and a member of the fire department that talked about benefits of landlords going to smoke-free housing. So uh, that is just a goal of, of that committee is just to provide these quarterly free brown bags for uh, landlords and property managers. So how do you... Um how do you let people know or landlords know? Does a notice go out to everybody who's registered or how does that? So all of our land, we ask that all of our landlords get signed up to receive e-notifications okay. and you do that on the City of Moorhead website. And then there's a little box to check called rental property communications. And by clicking that box, then that's when they are gonna get notice of these brown bags. Um, or any other important information either from myself or neighborhood services which that's the um, the division of the city that handles the rental registration uh, process and then I wrote down another, one more question you already answered one of them but so the training that you do um, this this uh, Minnesota crime free multi-housing program so this is something that they're required to do correct to Right, to get registered or as part of the registration? Yeah, right. So when they register uh, their rental property, again, this is as of 2005 right. to the present, when they register, then they are told that they have to attend this eight-hour training through me. And then I think you, to get a certificate or something? Yes, yes they get a certificate okay. of completion. Mm -hmm. Do they, do you guys do, um, do you require them to ever do it again? I mean, do you have like refresher courses? You know, we don't require it again because it is pretty much the same information okay. each and every time. But I, I have had people come back as a refresher. It's been several years. They right. just want to go through it again. But we only require it okay. one time. I sometimes think it's some people might need refreshers oh yes they're welcome <laughs> it sounds like they're great, welcome I mean, they're welcome to come again certainly okay so it would would notice that you're having one of these sessions go out with that e notification so anybody who's a landlord could be like gee i should probably go back in and and redo this or just get a refresher. correct okay. correct so my next class is in october end of october and so a notice will go out and 
everybody, you know, anybody's welcome. Um, we just try to focus on, especially those that um, have our new landlord, we really try yep. to make sure they get into that Absolutely. first available class. There's, sometimes you wonder if they did it again later on, they'd have maybe learn more and have more questions and you know get additional information now that they've been landlords for a little while. But No, that's a very good point. And of course, I'm always a, a resource for yeah. our landlords as well. Wonderful. So. Do we have this, can we put this on our, any of this information on our website? Or yeah, maybe possibly, I can, I can look at that. Just so that it's a place where they can look to if they're looking. I don't know. I don't know what we can well, probably, put on the website. Yeah, you know, definitely um, sending people to my web page on our Moorhead Police website, which is also the City of Moorhead's right. website. Um, I have a page. It's Crime Free Multi Housing Program, and so that's um, when I read, I advertise when my next scheduled course is. In fact, I'm looking at it now. It's Tuesday, October 29th, from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. And the the training is free. We do just ask them to register right. so that I have an idea how right. to set up for how many people. But yeah, so I would say so we if put you a link to put, put link. a link to this yeah. page would, would be very be, helpful. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, I can take a look at that. We'll be having links all over the place, please. <laughs> That's good, though. That's great information. Thank you for sharing. You're welcome. Anybody else have a question? So we have to wait for that training. Have any other stuff? Yes, so the training takes place twice a year. Mm -hmm. So I shared with you an agenda of what that training all encompasses. And so that was my spring training that we just had. It was on Tuesday, the evening of Tuesday, March 5th, and Tuesday, March 12th. I stated earlier that in the spring, I hold it over the course of two Tuesday evenings because we have a lot of landlords and property managers that kind of do that on the side. They have full-time jobs. So this um, is an opportunity for them to not have to take, take a day of uh, personal leave or vacation. Mm -hmm. So that's why I offer that in the evening. And in the fall, I offer it um, just during the day at 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. And that, that there is just kind of a sample of the things that they talk about in their classes. Class, is this class of Section 8 is, is different, or uh, what is this? What are you going to talk about this class? Yeah, so I, uh, in that se session, I have an employee with the Fargo Housing Authority, and she comes in and just explains what Section 8 housing is because I've found that uh, there are landlords or property managers maybe that just don't understand what Section 8 housing is about, therefore, they're maybe not so willing to um, to want to accept vouchers mm -hmm. or things like that just because they simply don't understand it. I think there's a lot of myths out there. So she comes in and, and fully explains the, the program, how it works, and I've gotten very good feedback from the landlords that say they actually really appreciate that session because, yeah, they, they just don't know a lot about it, and so they do feel more comfortable um, having her come and, and speak and educate them on it. Is there someone from section specific Central Aid will be there for the training? Yes, I, I have uh, Tamara. She's with the Fargo Housing Authority. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the uh, Section Aid holders are uh, complaining about it takes a long time now, kind of five years or six years. Is that something that a lot of people applied or what is that? Yeah, there is unfortunately a long waiting list. Um, that all the housing authorities do have, um, and I, I unfortunately don't have any control of that or or anything. Um, but they they do process as many through as they can, and I think the Fargo Housing Authority may have possibly the shortest list. Actually, I think she was mentioning last time uh, when she was at, just in my class. But but yeah, unfortunately, it's a, it's a long long list. Is there a separate so is there Moorhead and Fargo? Is it two and there's a Clay County and a Cass County Development Authority, okay. Housing and Redevelopment Authorities. And they all have different voucher programs. They do. 
but just because it's um, like the Fargo Housing Authority um, issues a voucher, but it can be used over on the Minnesota side. Okay. But so a, a landlord, do they have to sign up for a program to, to be able to accept Section 8, or how does that... Um, they don't have to sign up for anything. No, they can just they say just, yes. I will take section. Right, they just okay. accept the voucher, okay. and then they're part of the part of it. Mm -hmm. So if it's that simple, <laughs> <laughs> why would it be hard to get? I don't understand that, but, but uh, that probably is because people don't understand what Section Eight is. Yes, so it's right. hard to find landlords who will accept that then. Right, and and just landlords aren't required either to accept Section 8 vouchers. So, uh, you know, landlords could have criteria that maybe the person with the voucher doesn't meet that criteria. So sure. just because they have a voucher doesn't give them um, right. maybe any they special have like a privilege to... Right. Right, yeah. so they still do kind of have to fall into right. the other criteria that might be set by that landlord. Sometimes we just call the landlords and we say, hey, we, have, we need three bedrooms or four bedrooms, whatever. And we told them that the person have Section 8, they just decline from there. That, oh, Section 8, we don't accept Section 8 right there. They don't check any credit, they don't check anything. Yeah, some just won't accept it. Yeah. And that's, they can, right? Right. Right. But that's why I do feel having this speaker come to the class is to try to help with that, to try to get them to understand the benefits of, of actually having Section 8 housing vouchers is the, the rent assistance and right. so some of the stability that can come along with that. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we, that's why it is a valuable part of the, the training is having her, her come and explain some of that is to try to educate landlords and put them at ease and to, uh, yeah, just educate them more about it so that they are maybe more willing to, to try it. How about this one, crime, crime pretension, crime prevention? Uh, crime prevention through environmental design. Mm. So that is where I go out and do a free security assessment of the premises. And I gave you another handout here that um, talks more about that. There are seven indicators where I go out and assess the property. And the landlords, this is all voluntary. They don't have to do this because this is always gonna cost them some money because it is telling them that they have to chain, they have to make sure all their doors have single cylinder deadbolts on external doors. They have to have high security strike plates with two to three inch screws. They have to have a 180 degree eye viewer installed on the apartment doors because a standard eye viewer is 160. So when you look through a standard eye viewer, then there's blind spots on both sides because it's only 160. So we require that they have to change that out to be 180 and then there's no longer that blind spot on the side. So um, they can see the door side to side. Right, from side to side. Nobody can just step along, you know, step to the side and then not be seen. Uh, they have to, um, provide adequate security lighting. So that's me going out at night on their property and assessing, do I feel safe um, it, by the garages, by the garbage dumpsters, in the laundry room, things like that. Um, I also assess their landscaping. If they have overgrown um, bushes or trees, I tell them that they need to trim those down. We don't want anything on the property that's going to provide for concealment mm -hmm. that somebody could hide in. Um, for uh, for main floor uh, units, they would have to have anti-lift or slide devices on windows and sliding glass doors. And then the last one is easily visible building addresses. And that is very simply, there's, there's several dark brick apartment buildings out there that then have black address mm -hmm. numbers. So I would tell them that they need to switch that out to be white so it's very much contrasting because obviously you want emergency services to find you easily. So that's police, fire, ambulance. So 
so I go through and I, I assess their property and then um, give them suggestions and and but it is up to them. I can't force them to to do all these things. But I do find that a lot of them have taken me up on their on the lighting um, and definitely the landscaping because that's something that doesn't cost them money right. to make those changes. So, I and so if you come out and do an assessment and you give them back kind of a report, they're not required to fix any of those things. Right, so it doesn't really make sense. Why wouldn't you have you come out and check? <laughs> it's not really costing them right. anything. Right, it's, yep. I come out and do that additional for information for them to be aware of. Yep, exactly. Okay. <laughs> it's good information. Yeah. Any other questions? Well, thank you for the opportunity to come and speak to you about it. Thank you. This is great information. Now I'm totally curious about this Section 8 thing. I'm going to do something. We should have, can we have somebody come in and talk to us about that? We certainly could. What do you think? Sure. I can see about contacting my um, contact and see. If Make a good guest speaker. <laughs> She's wonderful. I, you know, I think some of the issue with it is, you know, I, I think there's kind of some stereotyping of low-income tenants. Right. So I think that some, there's some hesitation from landlords on that respect. Right. Yeah, I, I'm sure. That's, that's why I think it's great that they <laughs> discuss it in the class. Right. And I had never heard of, I had never heard of it before till just recently, and I'm like, what is that? But I thought you had to like sign as a landlord. I thought you had to sign up to be a part of the to accept the Section 8, so I had no, no idea. So that's good to know. Yeah, it'd be great to have somebody come talk to you more about, mm -hmm. about it yeah. so you understand it better. Right, and just get that information out, so maybe to cut down on the judging. Thank you. All right, thank you so thank much. Thank you so much for You're the information. You're welcome. Thank you for the information. We don't have quorum, so we can't really do anything else. Um, what's May agenda? Uh, that was just to see if uh, there's something you guys would like to see on the May agenda, uh, whether it's a speaker you have in mind. I mean, we could certainly mm -hmm. have someone come in and talk about. Follow, yeah, follow up. Do we want to talk a little bit? I kind of looked at this plan with Josh. I don't know if I need to. If we need to do motion and all that, maybe we can, we'll, just, well, we can't tonight. Right. Um, maybe we'll just table that. Until next time. Yeah. <clears throat> we could hear from Connie. Traffic was terrible. <laughs> I knew that that was, I told him, I said, there's like, if you don't go over me, because they shut it down today. Mm. I even left work early. I thought, oh, I better make sure I can get there on time. Oh, yeah. no. Oh, no. <laughs> there's basically only one way across to the unless you go under and around. Yeah, I go, yeah, I, go back, I go I went back and, and I used the highway, but I, I never come on time. I always come on <laughs> 5 or 3 or 5 or 5. Do you want to um, tell us a little bit about your building bridges? Oh, yeah. The, the building bridge is uh, the annual two days of building bridges conference bring us together, service providers, educators and community leaders who work with the refugee families as our community more diverse, strong and network cooperation in need. There were four speakers on the stage for the two days building bridge and uh, Carrie Easton was one of them. She's, she was a, she's an independent researcher, a writer and a decayer. Carrie thought her presentation was kind of focusing immigration issues of southern border, DACA refugees, asylum seeker. She was using a statistics data to verify the facts and myth. Refugees, the most extremely vet immigrant that arrived in the United States and has been in the camp for almost 10 or 20 years. Refugees are the most extreme uh, and uh, the nearest court of in Bloomington, Minnesota, where asylum seekers can apply starts rem to remain in the United States. Her speech was also focusing on the crisis that uh, 
we have our southern border children are taking part for their parents and asylum seekers are coming from El Salvador, Guatemala, and Nicaragua. Uh, she also uh, said that we are a nation of law. There is nothing illegal about crossing the United States border and asking asylum seeker. And uh, our second sp our second speech was uh, Helen. She was born in London to Irish parents. Uh, she writes a couple books. And the interesting part was she traveled to uh, Congo, where she visited uh, Congolese ca uh, refugee camp, education field, hospitals, markets, and many areas around the Congolese country. She was so emotional to see the hard life that uh, living by the Congolese people in the refugee camp. She wrote a book called The Newcomers. On her visit to Congo, Lutheran Social Service of North Dakota received the most refugee immigrants from Congo, followed by Burma and Karen. Dr. David was our third speaker. Uh, he's, uh, he's an author of over, four, over, over 40 original research papers. And doc, uh, Dr. David's speech was kind of relief to all of us because he was kind of focusing medicine and compassion. And his book, he was kind of uh, uh, he have a presentation about his book of medicine and compassion, a book that offer advice from uh, uh, Buddha, Buddha, I think Buddhists from Buddhists, and there was uh, something that he kind of uh, it was touching to me when he was saying like relaxing our mind is less disturbing by our thoughts, and that's the real uh, the real holidays, and. We have the fourth uh, speaker who was Dr. Basel Mosi. He's a program manager of detention, visitation of Lutheran, Lutheran social service. M Mr. Basel focused and discussed through his speech about detention centers in across 34 states in America. He said almost 70% of the de detention center is owned by, run by private companies. Every adult will pay 134, 134 USD per day, and families will pay 340 USD per day. And all these, the government is paying all this stuff through the taxpayers. He said that the people who are in the detention center, their life is so hard, and the centers, no quality standard, life almost cases. And the work of farming, and they are working farming or manufacturing or some kitchen stuff inside the center, and they are making a dollar a day. The, he was also mentioned that the phones that they are using inside the facilities are kind of expensive, uh, seven dollars a minute, something like that. So, to make a one-minute call for your family is kind of you have to work for the whole week, like seven days uh, for one dollar each day. His organization all helped the people who came out from the detention center, as he said, to integrate to the community, provide service and support to stabilize their lives. Uh, it was a great event, like uh, connecting a lot of community workers and a lot of experience. And for that two days, I think we uh, get more experience and we share a lot of conversations. There's us a small f uh, film that we watched about talking about refugees, and it was a great event. Were you able to go both days? Yes. I'm glad, I'm glad you were able to go. Yeah, it was very interesting. I, I was like, we need more than two days. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the report, that's very helpful. Was that held here? Yeah, in, in this Yeah, in fact, Holiday Inn Hotel. Does anybody have any, anything else, any upcoming events? And I believe we have a new commissioner that's going to be Yep, Heather Keeler uh, was appointed at the end of March. We've been short one for quite a while, so uh, she'll be here at our next meeting in April. Sorry, May. I think she's out of town. Yeah. 
Okay. Awesome. We're looking forward to that. And Willard is still injured. <laughs> oh, from falling off, off the roof, of think. the house. Yeah. I was wondering <laughs> if there's a particular reason why we have trouble getting people here for the meetings at oh. you know this time and day. Well, traffic today. Yes, mm -hmm. I am aware of that. Deb had another um, commitment. Uh, yeah, I believe Deb was out of town and Heather was out and Shinoir was sick today and had to go home. Um, yeah, and I haven't heard from Willard. We had a whole mess of reasons today. Yeah, <laughs> overall bad luck. Right. Yeah. But maybe next next time we can maybe visit about you know, if a different time works better for others, and to me it doesn't matter. But we can just, I mean, does five work for you or? Yeah, generally it's fine. Okay. It doesn't matter to me. Doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. We'll ask the other people. Yeah. Right yeah. And nobody has any other upcoming events? Do you got anything fun going on at Freedom Resource? Uh, no, nothing t uh, until September. Okay. got nothing. Do you have any other, you have any events happening that you know of? Not for now. Okay. Do we need a motion to adjourn? No, but we can adjourn. We're going to adjourn then. <laughs> And then we'll see you guys next month. All right. Normally we.